Good morning everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Elaine and I'm Ellie Welly Stitcher, both here on YouTube and also over on Instagram. And welcome, happy Easter. It's Easter Monday here in the UK and um, so it's a bank holiday and I haven't got to work and I've been missing for ages. I forget how many weeks it's been. I'm just going to top it up actually. One, two, three, four, five... Yeah, five weeks, that's quite long for me. And it nearly ended up being six because I wasn't quite sure whether I was going to be able to fit in a video today or not. But here we are, here we are. And it's a good job I am because I've got quite a lot to show you, having been away for five weeks. So um, welcome to my channel if you're a new subscriber. Thank you for coming and joining me. I seem to... I've lost quite a few subscribers um, after my last video, so um, not quite sure why, whether it's because I've been gone for a little while or I don't know. But anyway, if you are a new subscriber, welcome. And if you're one of my regular subscribers, thank you as always for coming back. I really, really appreciate it. And I love talking to you and hearing what you've been up to etc and um i just want to say a really big thank you to everybody who sent me such kind comments on my last video where i told you about prince it really really meant a lot to me um, and quite a few of you shared with me your own heartache when you've lost uh, one of your own dogs and um yeah it's it's the sad part of dog ownership isn't it and um yeah, anyway, I'm not going to talk about that anymore, but I just wanted to say to you all how much I super appreciated all of your comments. It, it really, from the bottom of my heart, it, re it really meant a lot to me. So thank you. Right, OK, apologies if you can hear Howard in the background giving it a bit of welly. Um, he's a bit excited at the moment. He's got three new friends. Um, I'll talk a bit about that in my my life bit at the end. But yeah, he's he's giving it some beans this morning. And I'm sorry if I sound a bit um a bit throaty today. I actually think I sound like I've smoked about a hundred cigarettes and I don't smoke by the way. But um yeah, I, I've I've had this god awful cough that I just can't get rid of. And I know quite a few floss tubers have mentioned they've had a bad cough as well and it seems to keep hanging around and yeah this one really is so I just have a had a bit of a coughing fit before I started talking to you and um yeah it's left me a bit bleh, a bit hoarse but still if if I have to pause the video it's because I'm having another coughing fit but hopefully we'll be okay right so what have I got for you today so I have got an FFO which I'm super excited to show you really I've got finish yeah guys it's my first finish of the year so i'm really pleased about that i've got quite a few whips to show you because i've been missing obviously for a little while and then i have got an absolute heap of haul seriously because since i last saw you we had um we had nashville and of course i bought some charts um i bought um, a couple of bags from uh, Pauline at Sobe Bags. I went to the Essex Needles retreat and of course I made some purchases there. So yeah, and I I've just got a whole heap of hauls. So if you don't like that bit, I'll tell you when it's coming and you can, you can switch off and I'll see you next time. And then I have got a bit of a book review because I've finished a couple of books since I last saw you. Um, and yeah, and just a bit of general life chit chat that I'll I'll do at the end. I'm not even going to say this is not going to be a long video because it more than likely is. So, and every time I say it's not going to be one, it always is. So, so yeah, I'm not even going to mention it. It's probably going to be a long video, guys. So buckle up, get the beverage of your choice, get your stitch in, and let's get stuck in. Right, so I last filmed on the 24th of February. Jesus, where, where on earth did March go? seriously um so that's how february this is my book of days 
and this is how uh, things ended up for me in February. So I ended up with uh, one, uh, two, two days where I didn't stitch in February, but um, all the rest that I did. And then, of course, I've now completed March. So let me show you what March ended up looking like. So here we go with March. And in actual fact, in March, I didn't stitch for four days, four days. Um, and that's predominantly been actually the last couple of days because we've had friends staying with us for Easter um, and I haven't stitched. I've talked a lot, hence probably why I've got a bit of a sore throat. But um, yeah, well, I haven't, I didn't stitch for a couple of days because we were out and about and doing things and, and, uh, and yeah, it was really lovely to have have visitors to stay so so they've gone home this morning so i thought i would film now and then um i've started to obviously we're only just started on april today um but i have started stickering up april a little bit so with a few flowers and you know hopefully the swallows will be be back at some point this month now that spring's here and the days are longer and um the weather over the whole weekend was absolutely lovely actually it's a bit colder today and it's very cl cloudy but um both saturday and sunday were bright sunshine and um and yesterday in particular was really warm so spring is here at last i love it i do not like the winter um so i'm very happy that we're now into my two favorite seasons spring and summer so right let's start with my fully finished object so while i was at the essex needles retreat last weekend i was able to pick up um a, an item that i had left to be framed with um hawkins hobbies i'll put them down below um so i handed this into them back in january our last stitch day um and i i was able to pick it up this weekend and um yeah, and it was quite an emotional moment, actually. I've got to say, it was, and it did bring a tear to my eye. So without any further ado, here is my fully finish of cheese delivery. And I just could not wait to show this to you guys. So, here we go. Here we are. So, um, I'm super, super, super pleased with this, really. So, yeah. Honestly, it really brought a tear to my eye when um, Serena from Hawkins Hobbies unwrapped it with me and, and showed me what it looked like. So this is cheese delivery for anybody who doesn't know and you haven't watched me before. This one, I really made a focus piece last year. It took me two and a half years altogether to complete this. Um, this is cheese delivery. The, uh, it's charted by Pain Free Crafts and the artwork is by Chris Dunn. And that's probably the last time I'm ever going to say that, sadly. But this has now taken pride of place in my dining room. Um, I did, as you can see, Robert, who does the framing, Serena's husband, uh, has done a super good job with this. Super good. So he, he stained the um, frame, which is an oak frame, so that it, it, can't, it matched... Um, kind of the wood effect in here and I did have this one with um, museum glass so it hasn't got very much glare to it at all so yeah I, I'm, I'm really honestly I am so 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 pleased with this so yeah this one I've had to take it off the wall today to come and show you but it's it does hang in my dining room now and I'm really 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 pleased with it so yes, yeah, so I, I had this on the uh, brag table at the retreat um, yeah, and I was really chuffed to show it to everybody. So there we go, there's cheese delivery completed. And Robert did tell me, the guy that framed this, that um, this is was stitched uh, 2 over 1 tenth stitch on 28 count and he did have to block it quite a few times to get it straight because yeah, tenth stitch, it can warp the fabric a little bit so oh, it's just started raining it can warp the fabric a little bit so uh he said yeah you did have to block it a few times 
So there you go, guys. That's cheese delivery. Finished and beautiful. Love it. Right. Um, then also I had a finish, which I haven't FFO'd yet, but I do know how I'm going to FFO it. I just haven't got around to doing it, basically. So this was a new start and a finish. So I started this one on the 1st of March. Um, and I started this as a bit of a start along, stitch along with my friend Sally from Flossy Sews and Grows. So if you don't watch Sally, please do go and watch her because she has some amazing projects. And both her and Somi Sarah are doing 50 new starts this year to celebrate their big 50th birthday. So um, I wanted to kind of t at least take part a little bit with that, not by doing 50 starts because that would be way too much for me. They've done lots of little projects and I don't stitch a lot of small things. So there's no way I would have done 50 starts, but I did want to um, kind of join in and celebrate a bit with them. So um, I decided to start this one with Sally on St. David's Day. Um, St. David is the patron saint of Wales. So it seemed appropriate to start it then. So the chart that I'm referring to that we started is called Home Sweet Home and it's by Scattered Seed Samplers and I won't show you the chart because I finished it. So here's my finish. I'm sorry I haven't ironed it yet but isn't it cute? I've, I've been exceedingly wasteful with fabric on this one, exceedingly and I'm really annoyed with myself for being so wasteful actually because I can only fit some very small bits on what I'm going to have left of this. I have decided, um, so on the actual chart, this is finished as the top of a box, and I don't want to do, that. no, it's not, or is it? No, it's finished as a round pinky. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put in a hoop, because I want to put this in my hallway in the house. And I have made some slight changes. Actually, I will show you the chart. So if you look at the chart, um, this has got the date on the bottom here and I didn't want to do that. So um, I took the date out. I didn't want to put 2024 on it. So I took the date out and I just put a couple of little doodad things at the bottom there. So the, yeah, I'm going to finish this in a, like I say, a little hoop. I haven't done a hoop finish for ages, so... But I'm really pleased. It, it stitched up really quick, actually. Um, there's The colours in this are all DMC. And there's only about uh, maybe five or six colours. Um, but yeah, all of her charts are uh, stitched in DMC, or all the ones I've ever stitched are, anyway. This one is stitched on 36 Count Vellum by Picture This Plus, which is a favourite fabric of mine. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. So I've finished it. I'm pretty sure... I haven't watched Sally's latest video yet. It's on my list to watch later, but I'm I'm almost certain she's finished hers as well because it was nearly done last time she showed it. But yeah, this was one over two, by the way, on 36 count. Isn't it cute? I think it's going to look great in my haul. So yeah, so that's my first finish of the year. May there be several more, I hope. So, So that's that one. And then we'll go on to my, we'll go on to my whips now. So I'll start with my full coverage whips. So the first one that I worked on, was it the first one I worked on? Yeah, it was the first one I worked on. So the first one that I worked on is um, charted by Pain Free Crafts and the artwork's by Chris Dunn. And this is Feast. I'll put a picture in of what it looked like when it's finished and what it looked like last time you saw it. And here I am with it now. Now, I'm not too far away, guys, from getting a squirrel coming in here, which is exciting. Yeah, in actual fact, I think I am going to work on that squirrel more next. Just because it's exciting to be stitching a squirrel, really. Um, so this is stitched on 28 count. And I'm stitching this 28 count easy guide. And I'm stitching this one one over one 
full cross. <coughs> Apologies for the coughing. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this one. And it's got such a lot of detail in this chart. Um, somebody asked me actually on my last video what the difference was between the two different types of gridded fabric. One's called Easy Guide and the other one's called Magic Guide. This is Easy Guide and this is um, a gridded fabric that's made by Zweigart. And it comes in 10 by 10 blocks, okay? And they're always gridded out in grey. Um, the other one is called Magic Guide and it's made by DMC. And it comes in pink gridded, gridded blocks. And they are gridded into 20 by 20 blocks. So, so that's the difference between the two. I've always used the this one, the Easy Guide by Zweigart. Um... But, you know, it's nothing wrong with the DMC version either. God, it really is raining now. So, yeah, so that's where we are with Feast. And then the only other full coverage that I worked on um, is also charted by Pain Free Crafts. But the artwork on this one is by Stanley Morrison. Oh, in, with Feast, by the way, I did uh, about 1,100 stitches on that one last month. Um, so yeah, so this is by Stanley Morrison. This is Blackberry Dragon. I'll put a picture in, uh, but you saw it last time, of what it looks like when it's finished. And with this one, you're probably not going to notice too much difference, actually. So what I've been doing with this one, here I am with it now. It's mostly filling. I bought uh, this uh, border down a bit more. I filled in more of the this wing over here, and I filled in. There's quite a lot of sort of ninjury stitches around these um, thorny bits. I don't know what you call them um, in his head, basically. So um, yeah, so you you probably don't notice a lot of difference. I've I've only done. 600 stitches on this one this is stitched two over one ten stitch uh, on 28 count easy guide so yeah not not a lot of progress on this one last month so i'll try and give this one a bit more love this month but yeah that's where we are with blackberry dragon okay so that's all my full coverage so now we'll move on to all my other whips basically so the first one i'm going to show you and i'm not going to get out the full thing of this one guys because um it's a bit of a pain this one to get in the q snap because there's loads of fabric basically so this one is merry merry needleworker and the artwork is by lindy stitches um or the designs by lindy stitches and I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and where you saw it last time. And this is where I am with it now. So I am I have finished like the other side of the border and I'm I've now finished this side of the border. Um and I am just putting in this butterfly on this side. Um, I'm quite a way through this one now. This is going to be a finish this this year, definitely. Um, I can't remember where I am with it. I'm at oh, something like 68%, something like that, maybe 70%. Um, this one is stitched on 32 count platinum by Zweigart. And I'm stitching this one two over two using all of the called for floss, which is a mixture of DMC and some overdyes. I think there's Weeks Dye Works, there's Genoa Arts and Classic. I think there's some of all of them. So, so that's where we are with Mary Mary. Very pleased with this one. So... <coughs> Right, next one. 
So I was feeling a bit spring-like. And I, I, I've kept these ones sort of in their project bags, but I have undone zips for anybody who's listening to me with headphones on. So I, I got this one out because, you know, spring has sprung and I wanted to stitch on something springy. So this is by The Drawn Thread and it's called The Kitchen Garden. This is what it looks like when it's finished. So super cute this, love this. And I like this piece because it's a little, little bit more challenging in that there are speciality stitches in this. Um, you know, there's some Smyrna crosses, there's some rice stitches, which I found a bit of a pain, to be honest. And there's, you know, long stitches and back stitch and all sorts. So I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time, hopefully. And here I am with it now. So I back stitched in uh, some of the wording down here. I finished off the windows on the house, so the house is completely finished now. Um, I've started on this bit over here. So this is um, some tomatoes that are going to come in over here. And then on this side, or is it this side? No. Yes, this is tomatoes this side, and this side is going to be peas. So... Yeah, I'm really pleased with this. This is stitched on a uh, 32 count fabric by Zweigart. This is called Summer Khaki. And this is stitched one over two using a mixture of dinky dyes, um, MPIs and DMC. But I bought this as a complete kit from the Nimble Thimble. They're really good. If you want to do a drawn thread and you don't want to buy, you know, a huge amount of silks um chris kits these up with just the right amount that you need so well worth buying a drawn thread kit from her so there you go i would like to say i'll get this one finished this year as well so it's not really very big that one and it is a really nice stitch i like stitching that right so i'm just going to put those bits back honestly guys if you could see I put all my, my stuff out ready to film on my desk. And uh, yeah, it looks like, honestly, it looks like bombs here. It really does. Anybody who makes floss tubes will tell you. Like, you end up with everything everywhere and it looks a complete and utter train crash, really. Right, um, next one. So I'm saying that this is the next one I stitched on, but it probably isn't. They're in all sorts of order, so... Um, this one I haven't stitched on as much as I would have liked to have done actually because once I get going on this one I love it absolutely love it so this one is Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais here's what it looks like when it's finished quite a lot of people are stitching this one it's just beautiful it has such gorgeous colours in it I'll hopefully put a picture in the way you saw it last time And here I am with it now. Those colours aren't showing too, too, up too well, actually. So I'd already gone round all over the border ages ago, but I've now been coming across here and I've stitched these in here. And they're such a gorgeous colour. This um, the light in here isn't really doing these justice, actually. They're really, really pretty colours. So, yeah, so that's where I am with this one. This is stitched on 36 count platinum by Zweigart. And I'm stitching this using all the called for colours, which are a mixture of DMC and over dyed. And this is one over two. So, yeah, that's where I am with that one. Love it. I just love it. Like I say, when, when I get going on it, I find it very difficult to put that one down. It, it's one of my, I've got two projects which are absolute favourites of mine at the moment. And that is one of them. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying stitching this. Okay, so. God, it really is raining out there. It is really raining. 
By the way, those of you who watch me regularly will notice that I have a new friend behind me. <laughs> so, um, I have had her for years, absolute years. Um, she hasn't got a name. She... <laughs> She used to sit in my conservatory in my old house and I put her in the conservatory when we moved here. But she doesn't really go, she doesn't. And I can't find anywhere in the house where I really think, yeah, that's the right place for her. And I, I seem to be the only person that loves her. She's really characterful and um, she is a puppet, as you can see. And I bought her, oh, it must be... 20 years ago, at least, I bought her in um, a really quirky shop in Prague in the Czech Republic. And, uh, yeah, she she is handmade in Prague or in Czechoslovakia. And, um, yeah, she she's a bit quirky. But people come around my house and they go, Elaine, that is ugly. What are you, why have you got that? And I'm like, I like her. I do like her. So, yeah, so she's come to live in my craft room because... I seem to be the only person that likes her, so... Oh, well, I don't care. I can have what I like in here. It's my room, so... Right. The next one I've got to show you is uh, by Long Dog Samplers. So this is Clamfire PG. And I will put a picture in of where you saw this last time. Here I am with it now. I am in the middle of stitching this bit here at the moment. I'll say this bit, but it's actually quite a big bit. These trees, believe me, there's a lot of stitching in them. There is a lot of stitching in those. Um, so this one is stitched on uh, 28 count even weave in the colourway Knox by Chromatic Alchemy. And I'm stitching this using uh, mostly dinky dye silks. So there's uh, three dinky dye silks. The, the sort of whitish, silvery white one is called Quicksilver. This is Ghost Gum. And then this is Robin's Egg. And then that glorious variegated silk is called Peacock, Peacock Fuchsia by x Designs. So... That's where we are with this one. And this one, I am at 70% now. So, yeah, not doing too bad with that one at all. It's coming along quite nicely. So, that's Clamfire PG. And I'm hoping to have that finished this year because now I live in Wales, it would be rather nice to have Welsh spoons on the wall in my house. Okay, so next one I've got to show you. Uh, and I'm quite pleased with my progress on this one because this one is not far off a finish, actually, excitingly enough. So this one is by the Cricut Collection and um, it's one of their seasonal designs. This is Autumn. Here's what it looks like when it's finished. I'm pretty confident that loads of you have seen this because it's a super popular chart. All of her seasonal ones and her monthly ones are really popular. So I've loved stitching this. Lots of people say they love stitching this and I completely understand why. I've really, really loved stitching this. I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And here I am with it now. So I've finished the A, as you can see. I've put that black cat in and uh, the, the crow outside there. So that's completely finished. So all I've got left to do is the N over this side. And um, the, I, I'm not sure if he's a... I think he's supposed to be a turkey, maybe. 
maybe to represent Thanksgiving. But he does look a bit like a pheasant as well. So obviously we don't we don't eat turkey in the UK in the autumn. We save that for Christmas. So maybe I'll pretend he's a pheasant. So yeah, I've just got the end to do. So um, I might try and finish this this month. Um, I'm stitching this one on a 28 count fabric called Cirrus um, by Chromatic Alchemy. This is an opalescent fabric. And yeah, I'd be excited to get this one finished ready for the autumn this year. I'm using all the called for colours except for there was a silken colours in this one and I couldn't find it. So I used the DMC substitute. So yeah, nearly, nearly finished that one. And then we can move on to another one of the seasonal ones. I'll maybe do spring next, actually. Um, for those of you who haven't been watching me for very long, I, I already have summer completed. Um, you can't see it from down there, but it's, it's up there on top of my dresser. So. so that is autumn. Right. I've only got two more left to show you. Let me show you this one next, because this is the one I've been working on most recently. I've only had this one out for one day. This I just bought this one out on Good Friday while I was waiting for my friends to turn up. This is The Christmas Witch by Cathy Barrick. Um, this is what it looks like when it's finished. And this might look small, but believe me, there is a lot of stitching in this. There really is. And it isn't the greatest chart to read either. Um, I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And here I am with it now. So I've finished off a bit more of the word in down here. So I've only got one more word to put in. So she stitched a mat for her black just got cat to put in then I moved over and I just did a few more stitches in her rather large dress but that's where I am currently with this one this one is stitched on a 35 count linen in the colorway harvest blush which I love by sparklies if I could get more of this but uh, I haven't seen her have any more of this but it is a really nice fabric so that's where I am with that one. And I am stitching this using all of the cool four colours, which are a mix of DMC and a couple of overdyes. So, yeah. It's coming along, that one. It's coming along. Don't know if I'll finish that one this year because it doesn't come out very often, but, but I do like it. Right, now, finally, I said there's two projects that I'm a bit obsessed with wanting to stitch at the moment. And this is the main one. So rejoice evermore. Once I get it out, I don't want to put it away. But this one, this one, really. So this is With Thy Hands by Teresa Kogut. This is what it looks like when it's finished. And I'm stitching that, this big sampler. I am stitching this as a stitch along with Stitchy Sally. Um, so Stitchy Sally started this as one of her six for 60 starts. For her 60th birthday and I loved it so much I decided to join her um, and then um, Sally from Flossie Sews and Grow she joined in but she's stitching a different Teresa Kogut. So Sally is doing great guns with hers last time I saw it um, and I'm terrible at posting on Instagram you know I am Sally so you have to wait for my progress on here normally. Um, I'll put a picture in where you saw it last time. And here I am with it now. So, I've, as you can see, I finished that big house in the middle and that was some stitching, it was. I took this to the retreat with me last weekend just because it, that house was great for a bit of mindless fill-in stitching. Um, this is stitched on 36 count vintage country mocha from Zweigart and I am using all the called four colours so they are a mix of DMC and overdyes. Now, I made an alteration on this, so and I'm glad that I did. It was a mistake, 
but it was um it was a good mistake so this tree know if you can see that very well that tree has got a pattern in it hopefully you can see that now the the actual floss that you should use for this tree are two kind of different shades of green but they are so close to each other in color that if i'd stitched it in the called for you wouldn't have seen the pattern in the tree now i made a mistake and misread the symbol and I stitched this tree in this, the green is correct, then this goldy colour is not correct. It's the wrong colour. But in actual fact, it's done me a favour because now you put, you can't see it so well on camera, but that pattern, it actually shows up um, quite well in, in real life, so to speak. So I'm really pleased with the way it turns out. And I did message Sally and say just... Be careful of that because she she's stitching hers from the bottom upwards and I've obviously gone from the top down. So it's quite good because we've gone different ways to each other. But yeah, that um, I did say to her, be careful of that tree because all those trees, because there's another one the other side. If you use the call for, they don't necessarily stand out. OK. So that's all my stitching. Oops, sorry about the zip. Forgot, 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 forgot. Right, okay, that's all my stitching that I've got to show you. Um, so maybe not too many projects, but I've, you know, I have had a, a start and a finish out of those. And I have made quite a bit of progress on some of the others. So, so you know, I'm not I'm not too displeased, and like I said, I've had four days in March where I didn't stitch. Last weekend I was at um, a retreat, Essex Needles, and I hardly stitched at all because um, I I host them with Teresa Little Stitcher, and you know we're a bit busy kind of chatting to everybody, and we don't get an awful lot of stitching done either of us, so we're having too much fun chatting to everybody basically. So I did get a little bit of stitching done, but it wasn't much. Not not considering I had a whole weekend dedicated to stitching. Didn't happen. Okay, right, I'm going to go on to haul. So if you don't like um, shopping, then uh, I completely understand. And I'll, I'll see you next time, I hope. For those of you that do like to see a bit of shopping... Yeah, I have got a bit of shopping to show you. So we will get into that now. Right, I'm going to start with um, charts that I've purchased. Uh, so, I need, just need to organise things slightly, bear with. So I have two charts that I purchased from Fobbles. Um, and these ones aren't Nashville charts. These are just two that I really liked. One of them was the result of um, some enablement, enablement by my friend Stitchy Sally. I was gifted a um, gift voucher for Fobbles by the lovely Sue, who watches my channel. Thank you, Sue. Uh, she's just such a generous person, seriously. Um, and I... I cherished it and looked after it and didn't know what to spend it on and then stitchy sally kept showing her this particular chart and i thought oh, i really want that so while i was at it um i bought another chart as well so uh, i purchased this one with my fobbles voucher this is forget me not pinky by scattered seed samplers and this one um, I'm going to stitch in memory of my mum. Um, I've stitched a few things in memory of my mum, but I'm going to stitch this one because um, we all got gifted. Uh, uh, when my mum passed away, we all got gifted packets of seeds of forget-me-nots. Um, and I kept some to plant in my garden here, actually. Um, so forget-me-not pink heap seems a bit appropriate. So... I got that one. And then the other chart I got, and this was completely down to Stitchy Sally, is the Wonderful Life Pink Heat Drum. 
which Sally's just finished. And it looked amazing, stitched up. And I thought, I've only got one drum and I would like to do this as a drum. So, yeah, I bought that as well. So both of those charts were compliments of the lovely Sue, like I say, who watches my channel. So thank you, Sue. That was I really, really appreciate it. I really do. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. So, yes, I've got those to stitch. Um, and when I'm stitching them, Sue, they will make me think of you, that's for sure. And then, of course, I did buy some charts from Nashville Needle Work Market. I wasn't going to, but one particular chart really, really, really called to me. Um, and so I will show you that one first, actually. So the one that I really, really, really wanted is this one. It's by Teresa Kogut, and it's called Wherever There Are Birds. It's this one. So I've seen lots of people have bought her she bought out some she knocked it out of the park i think we've her designs for nashville but i particularly love this bird i've seen lots of people have bought the serenity sampler and i probably will buy that as well um but i really liked this chart so i purchased that i got that from um i did a pre-order with sue at peakside needleworks not all of these came from her though um, I then bought um, this one, which is by Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery, and it's Fox Glove House. I just really liked it. I thought it was really pretty. I've got a few of these. I haven't got all of them, but I've got a few of her houses now. But I thought that was quite a nice summery chart. That one I got from Peakside. I also got this one. This was also from Peakside. And this is the first time I bought this designer. It's the Artsy Housewife and it's called Gorgeous. And again, it's another big bird. But I, I do like that too. So I purchased that one. Again, that was from Sue at um, Peakside Noodleworks. Um, and then I bought... Uh, I bought a few charts, actually, from Jeff P. Smith, Trudy, on eBay. I bought a lot more charts than these, but um, most of them I did bought as purchases for a couple of few games that we played at the Essex Needles Retreat. So I bought some Nashville charts for that. Some of, uh, most of which I got from Jeff P. Smith, except for these two. These two were for me. So I bought Plum Street Samplers, Spring Beginnings. This one, because you know, springtime, times get some springy charts. And I absolutely fell in love with this one, so I had to buy this one as well. So, this is Le Poulet Pinky by Stacey Nash. And of course, there's a chicken. Look at that, it's awesome. So, that was another purchase. Um, and then I bought some charts at the Essex Needles Retreat as well. So they were all my Nashville purchases. Um, so I bought this chart. One of the shops that we had there this time was Sparkly's. Um, and not only does Kate do fabric, but she sells charts as well. Um, and I'd never seen this designer before, but I kind of fell in love with this chart. And it's not my normal style. But I just really like it. So this is by Lena Lawson Needle Arts. And it's called Gnome's Best Friend. And I love, loved him. Seriously, he's so characterful. Look. I really, really love that. Love it. This is quite a big stitch. It's 134 by 168. And it has got um, a few blends, actually. Um, yeah, it's got quite a few blends in it. Some half stitches, but I love it. Loved it. So I bought that. And then we had a D stash table and I bought these two charts from my friend Gina. So I bought this one by Madame Chantilly called Halloween Tree. As you can see, some more big birds. 
got a big bit of a thing about crows at the moment and i have a garden full of crows because every morning when i go and put the bird seed out the first thing to appear is a what do they call them a murder of crows there's about four or five of them that turn up um and i also purchased this one which i saw this stitched up it was on the brag table at the retreat and it looked brilliant so i bought it was also on the D stash by my friend Gina. So this is Midnight Watch by Blackbird Designs. So yeah. Okay, so they were all my chart purchases. Um, I purchased a couple of bags before the retreat. Um, so I purchased some bags from my lovely friend Pauline at Sobe Bags. She sells her bags on Instagram. Um, I bought a sheepy one a little while ago now. Of course I bought a sheep one because uh -huh. I love sheep. So I bought that one. And then I purchased two bags off of her. Um, she bought out some bags in Teresa Cogat spring fabric i bought two one of them i gave, did as a raffle price at the essex needles retreat so i haven't got that one to show you but it was in a red fabric um and this is the one that i kept for myself isn't it cute look at this fabulous fabulous i saw the fabric and i just fell in love so yes i bought bought this and another one and the lady who won the other one at the retreat was thrilled to bits so but yeah I think it's great love Teresa Cogat fabric so thank you for the bags Pauline uh, they were just too irresistible not to purchase um now along with my FFO cheese delivery I also ordered from Hawkins Hobbies about six months ago I ordered a birthday present for myself. So anybody who's watched me for a while will know it was my 60th birthday last year. In November, it was towards the end of the year. And I treated myself to um, kitting up a chatelaine. Never stitched a chatelaine before. I'm really excited about it. I haven't bought my fabric yet, but I already had the chart. So the chart that I decided to stitch is the sparkling peacock mandala which is this one i just love the colors and i think i'm not going to get a really fancy fabric because i think you know it do, the design doesn't need it i'm just going to buy it like a silvery gray color um one of the ladies at our retreat showed me a fabric by um fabrics by crafty kate actually which was a gray um, and I might try and order that for it because, yeah, I think just a plain grey would look great. So I got all of the silks, which are a mixture of Caron Water Lilies, Gloriana's, which I've never stitched with before, the Dinky Dyes, which I have. Look at those colours. I mean, look at, look at this colour here it's called Blue Hawaii. Look at that. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. That's a Gloriana, I think. It came with the DMCs that you need. I had all the shorts. La, la, la. Put your teeth back in your lane. It had all the shorts. Swarovski crystals with it. I can't, I'm not going to get them all out, guys, because, like, but just know that they are gorgeous. Um, and then it came with all of the um, petite treasure braids the silk lame braid there's a whole bunch of them so i've got everything now to sort out apart from the fabric and then i can um i can make a start on that chatelaine i've got to get myself as well sorry for the rustling i've got to get myself as well um i think i need to stitch that on some scroll bars rather than um, obviously a Q-snap or anything else. I might be able to start it in a Q-snap, but to do the centre part, but once I start beading it, 
um, and I've been advised to at least bead the centre as I go, I'm going to need to get a scroll frame. So, um, I don't, the trouble is I don't, so I need a scroll frame that's going to, a big, the big one, because the fabric's 27 by 27 that I need, so it needs to be a big, big scroll frame. Um, I have got a scroll frame, but it's not, it's not very good. Um, and I want to be able to put it on my Lowry stand. I have got the scroll bar adjustment thing for my Lowry. Um, so I'm thinking about getting an Omnic frame. What do you guys think? Don't recommend Millennium frames to me because after my previous experience with them, I'm not prepared to purchase from them again. So, um, but Omnic apparently very good. What would you say? Let me know. Right, um, like I said before, uh, Sparkly's was at the retreat, so I did buy some fabric because why wouldn't I? And I like Sparkly's fabric, so I bought this piece, and this piece is for a specific piece. This is a 28 count even weave, um, and I don't normally stitch on 28 count anymore, but this particular piece of fabric is to put winter from the Cricut collection on. So I did have a fabric for winter. I was gonna stitch it on um, Tempest by Chromatic Alchemy, but I bought it in a 32 count. And as I'd already got all of the others, um, the fabric for all the others is 28 count. I wanted them all to be the same, even though they're not gonna be displayed together. Um, so I bought 28 count fabric, so that is to stitch winter from the Cricut collection on. It is called charcoal, um, and it's not showing very true to colour actually. This is a, a very bluey, sort of a dull blue colour, sort of a moody sky. It's called charcoal slate. So yeah, so that is for my Cricut collection winter. When I get round to stitching, I think that's going to be the last one that I stitch actually. Um, okay, and then I also bought, with no no particular um, notion of what I'm going to stitch on them, I bought this one, which I thought was a nice neutral for a sampler or something. This is a very pale grey. And this is called Cambrian, and this is a 36 count linen. Yeah, that's showing quite true to colour. Now, see, this might have been all right for my mandala, but it's not big enough. This is a fat quarter, it's not big enough. But it is a really nice fabric, so. So very happy with that. I do like um, Sparkly's fabrics, I have to say. Uh, okay. And then, last piece of fabric I bought, like I really need fabric, obviously. Uh, this one was a 40 count linen. Uh, I, again, I have nothing to stitch this on at the minute, but I will find something, I'm sure. This is 40 count, this is called Slightly Rosy. And it's a really nice mottled pink. Isn't that lovely? Something spring-like would be nice on that, I think. So that's that one. Don't know what's going on out there. It seems to have stopped raining now, which is good. So that's all the fabric that I bought. Right, now I have a whole selection of stuff. So back in uh, at our January stitch day at the Essex Needles retreat, <coughs> Sorry guys, I had to pause because I decided to have a coffin fit. Okay, so as I was saying, back in January at our Essex Needles Retreat Stitch Day, um, I had purchased from my friend Jan um, a fabric panel from Hands Across the Sea. 
So she had been to the Great British Sampler weekend and uh, she'd show me a picture of these panels and she said, do you want me to get you one? I said, oh yeah, please. So she brought it to the January stitch day with her um, and I asked my lovely friend Susie, who makes project bags and is an absolutely amazing quilter, uh, whether she could do something with this panel for me. And she said, yeah, give, leave it with me. I'll take it away and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do with it. So I gave her a couple of ideas of things that I wanted um, and she took my panel and um, she came to the Essex Needles retreat and she'd bought my panel back. So not only did she bring my panel back, but Jan also gave me when I saw her in January a couple of gifts for my new house because she hadn't seen me since I'd moved. Uh, one of which was a tea towel. So she gave me a tea towel with chickens on it. Um, and I said, oh, God, that's far too good to be used as a tea towel. So Susie also took the tea towel away and turned it into a project bag for me. And this is the project bag that she made. I mean, look at those chickens. Do you see what I mean? This was way, way, way too good. Look at that. This was way, way, way too good to be used as a tea towel. So yeah, so Susie turned it into a project bag for me. So delighted with that, just delighted. So, and it's a really big one as well. So I can stick something really good in there. Right. Now I'm going to show you what Susie did for me with my Hands Across the Sea panel. And it just blew me away. Seriously, what she made blew me away. So I'll start with the little bits and bobs. So she made me a little, a little small tiny bag. This one. And she finished these off with her own um, fabrics as well that she could find to match. And this one's got... A little pocket inside it. She literally has used practically every single piece of the panel that I bought. So cute bag, cute, cute, cute bag. She also made me a needle book. This one. And it's got little pockets and she did a pen test on it for me cute huh how amazing is that seriously she also made me this little bag to put my dressmaking scissors in or rotary cutter that kind of thing again all quilted cute huh i haven't used any of this yet because i've been waiting to show it to you guys so once i've shown you it all i can put put it out on display etc she also made me a cushion out of this and um, this uh, I know you're all going to shout at me for not knowing the name of the sampler but I love that sampler with that bird on it and I know it's one of the more popular I know I know all of Nicola's designs are popular but that one in particular is like gorgeous 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 so little pin cushion which can go on my dresser or indoors, whatever. And she made me another pincushion. How cute is this? So again, I'll 
probably I don't know whether I'm gonna put these up on my dresser or whether I they're just so lovely I'll put them indoors in the house so that was those she also made me a stitching mat isn't it pretty and I used this at the retreat so I can put got these pockets to put all my bits in there's the back How amazing is that? Gorgeous. And then, project bag. It's a plain heart fabric inside it. But yeah, that easy fit an 8 by 8 Q-snap. Another project bag. And, and obviously Susie's put her own fabrics on these. That one's got stars in it. Isn't it amazing? Can you see why I was blown away, literally? Um... A vinyl fronted project bag. So the vinyl's got little hearts on. Gorgeous. Right, these. I've got two of these. Where's the other one? There it is. Cushion covers. So I've got two of these and I'm going to... Um, I've just got to buy the cushion pads to go inside and these are going to be for my craft room. Got different backing fabrics on them, but yeah, two cushions. So they can sit on my settee in here. So yeah, I love those, absolutely love them. Another vinyl fronted, the vinyl fronted project bag. Again with the heart, um, this heart vinyl. Gorgeous. And then a full project bag. And Susie puts these um, tags on her bag so that you can write out your project and put it in the in the clear wallet on the side so that's that project bag this one would fit an 11 by 11 i think you snap little stars inside gorgeous and then finally she made me this really big project bag which will fit a 17 by 14 Q snap. And this one's a top, top zip. And then this star fabric inside. And this one's got a more of a bucket bottom. But Susie literally used every piece of that panel to make all the oh and finally sorry i nearly forgot a thread bed as well so honestly I, I just words failed me seriously i spent half the weekend speechless over either cheese delivery or all the bits that susie had made for me so so chuffed so chuffed i just yeah how lucky was I? Seriously, so lucky. Okay, so that is all of my haul. And I think you'll agree with me. I think most of the video has been haul rather than um, stitching. Okay, so not too much more to go. You'll probably be pleased to know. Uh, so I just want to give a shout out to a floss tuber, a new floss tuber. Uh, so I... I 
keep forgetting to give floss tube a sh shout out but um please 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 go and give some love to sharon's crafty creations i will put her in the comment box below so sharon's crafty creation sharon did her first floss tube video which is a whip parade at the essex needles retreat so <laughs> she filmed it in her bedroom at the hotel she had bought with her we didn't know she was going to do this and sharon's a regular at our retreats i think she's been to nearly every single one sharon bought all of her 60 whips with her to the retreat and filmed her very first floss tube in her bedroom uh, and she's a real natural if you like full coverage in particular most the vast majority of sharon's whips are full coverage and she has got some absolute stunners. She's got a mix of hate, she's got some gecko rouge, she's got yeah, some artists that I've never seen before. Um, yeah, she's got some really beautiful, beautiful whips. So um, yeah, please pop over and give Sharon a bit of love. Uh, you know, like I say, Sharon comes to our retreats. She is a super lovely person. Um, and she deserves a watch and I can't wait to see her next video. She did say she's probably only going to film every six weeks or so because she does such big projects. She said you won't see much progress um, so I can't really film every couple of weeks but yeah we didn't know she was going to do that so it was a real big surprise um, to see Sharon's video um, pop up. I think it was on Monday or Tuesday last week so so go check Sharon out, particularly if you like full coverage, because like I say, there's some real eye candy to see there. Uh, right. Apart from that, life, life wise. So, yeah, so we just had friends for the weekend, which has been lovely. So we've gone out and about and done some touristy type things. Um, we were blessed with the weather. It's been beautiful. So um, they brought the sunshine with them. Or the sun came out to show Anglesey at its very best, let's say, at least. Um, retreat last weekend was brilliant to see the ladies again. We had a great time. It's the biggest retreat we've done so far. We had uh, 70 ladies for this one. Um, we can't, we won't go any bigger than that. That's as big as it'll ever be. Uh, but yeah, so it was good to meet old friends again and meet some new faces too um what else what else work's been really busy really really busy uh i'm still enjoying it really love my job so that's good um yeah so chickens oh yeah i didn't tell you about the chickens so my friends that have just been for the weekend bought me um three new chickens with them so they've travelled all the way from Essex. For those of you not in the UK, Essex is about 300 miles from where I live. So they drove 300 miles with three chickens in the back of their car. Um, and we, we introduced them to my existing chickens and my cockerel. Um, I was advised at the retreat by Stitchy Rach who is another floss tuber. So if you haven't watched Stitchy Rach, go check her out. Um, I was advised by Stitchy Rach to put the new chickens in the coop at night when the chickens are all sleepy. And, and she said they wake up in the morning and they think they've always been there. And it kind of introduces them quite well. Just wanted to let you know, Rachel, it works. It works an absolute dream. We put we sneaked the chickens in at night, put them all in the coop together and touch wood. We've had the odd pet, but there hasn't been any fights. Um, and the new ones have really settled in quite well with my existing chickens. So and Howard is like my cockerel is cock of the hoop at the moment because, you know, he's got three new girls in his little posse. So he's, you know, he's, he, he's well happy. So, yes, yeah, so I have new chickens. Um. I won't on this video, but I will try and put some pictures of them on my next video so you get to see them. One of them's super, super feisty, and we've named it. She, she's a, a, a sort of a gingery red colour, um, and we've named her Ginger after Ginger Spice. Um, 
but because she's a bit spicy and feisty. And then we've got like a little grey one. She's super pretty and we've called her Pretty Polly. And then we've got a Mexican chicken and we've called her Tequila. So yeah, three new chickens. Um, and then books, books. I finished two books since I last saw you. Uh, basically because I couldn't put them down. So I think in my last video I told you I was reading the first one in the Crescent, C Crescent City series by Sarah J Maas. Uh, I finished that. I absolutely loved that book. The book is called House of Earth and Blood. It is the first one in the Crescent City series. I was then advised, um, my HR assistant at work is a massive Sarah J Maas fan. She went... <gasps> Don't read any more of the Crescent City ones because they're linked to other books. She said, you need to start off with the very first series. So that's what I've done. So I then went back and read A Court of Thorn and Roses, Thorns and Roses. Um, and I finished that also by Sarah J Mass. And I'm now reading the second one in that series, which is called A Court of Mist and Fury. And I'm about halfway through that one and absolutely loving it. Um, rating for each of those books, absolutely five star, absolutely five star. And we, we've started a little bit of um, a reading file now on the, we've got Essex Needles Retreat has got a Facebook group. You're more than welcome to join, by the way, even if you don't come to the retreats, more the merrier. Um, but we at the retreats, we do have a bit of a book club, um, a bit of a book chat going on. Uh, a group of us ladies and I can never remember the books that they've recommended but they've set up a file now on our Facebook group so um, when we've all read a book and we've really enjoyed it we can share them with the other readers in the group and then I think a lot of cross stitchers seem to read or listen to audio books or whatever when they're stitching so so there's some recommendations on there now that I need to get round to reading but at the minute I am super hooked on Sarah J Mass. I've got to say, super hooked. Okay, so I think that's all I've got for you today. Apologies for being a bit croaky. Hopefully, I'll be back to normal next time I see you. Um, so, yeah, it just remains for me to say thank you for spending some time with me. It's very much appreciated. If you are a new subscriber... Um, it would be brilliant if you if you are a new viewer rather it'd be great if you liked and subscribed no pressure or nothing but you know if you want to come and visit with me again it would be super um, those of you that come and watch me all the time thank you for coming back thank you very much indeed um, it's really good to be talking to you all again because I've missed you it's been ages like yeah so hopefully my voice will be back to normal next time I film uh, and it will be at the end of April, so I won't leave it five weeks. Hopefully it will be four weeks next time, three or four weeks. Um, so please leave any comments for me. I'll try and get back to you at the very least. I'll try and heart them if I don't um, If I don't comment back. I did try last month to comment to as many people as I possibly could. Anyway, I'm waffling now, so I'm going to go. So thank you for spending some time with me today. Happy Easter to you all and um, I'll see you all again soon. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.